I am ranked number one. One! That means I'm the best. How much excuses are the fake Golovkin fans going to have? And how long are they going to continue? You know, I heard somebody saying that Floyd um, hadn't scored barely no stoppages in the last 10 years. How is that a dominant fighter? But his career spanned five weight classes. And you go to each weight class, it's either a big name, a big fight, or a big scout that's been taken. Plural. In each weight class. And this guy was a Triple G fan. And I'm thinking, if you can't do the simple math that the opposition that Mayweather has faced is way more robust than Triple G's has been, and he's been outsized more in, in much more of his fights than Triple G has, why would I even bother debating you saying you're a boxing fan? Triple G is going on to 35 years of age, and... He hasn't had no big night fights. I'm not going to use the word super fight no more. At least not in this video. The Jacob fight. The Jacob. Yeah, that, that was a big night fight. But Jacob was supposed to be KO'd in quick time. He hasn't been in a fight where people are thinking, oh, they're coming to the arena like Canelo's fan base, thinking the changing of the guard was about to take place. He hasn't been in a fight like that. Floyd has. And he's won all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know they don't want to accept this stuff here, but it's the truth. You bring up the Rigondeaux situation at HBO, and they'll say, well, Rigondeaux is boring, and... I, 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 I. But Rigondeaux was in a fight where he wasn't the clear-cut favorite. He wasn't the favorite. I think Donaire was the favorite. Donaire was Ring Magazine's 2012 Fighter of the Year. The reason I'm quoting them, I know they ain't got no respectability. It's an absolute disgrace now. But they seem to be thinking that they're the guys who set the agenda. All the people following the ring and the fighters the ring support right now. Throw HBO in there too. They're setting the agenda. Well, by your agenda, he was the 2012 best fighter of the year. And this guy bested him. And how was he rewarded? He was taken off the network. He was outweighed. Not the favorite. Comprehensively outboxed the guy. Broke his orbital bone. The fight was not boring. Now don't get me wrong, Triple G's a good fighter and I was quite impressed with his performance. I was, I was, yeah? But let's keep it real. What happened to Triple G in the fight? He defeated somebody who's been knocked out already, was an overwhelming underdog. He had a regular interim belt. It was not a unification fight. He was a contender. He was a mandatory contender. The belt Jacobs brought into the ring is nothing but a mandatory contender belt. And Triple G struggled against this guy. My unbiased opinion, Triple G lost. And then they bitch about Jacobs being bigger than Triple G. But Donaire was bigger than Rigondeaux. Donaire was of higher standing than Jacobs. And he dominated. Triple G didn't dominate the guy. Rigondeaux dominated the bigger guy in a fight he wasn't necessarily supposed to win. And what did they do? They took him off the network. And they're so biased. Simple reasoning and logic like that is just like impossible to engage them in a serious adult debate about boxing. This is the same demographic who were toying with the idea of Triple G being able to knock out Deontay Wilder. And we keep hearing how he knocks out cruiserweights and light heavies and no one who weighs in at 160 can even think of going the distance. HBO saying that he had the highest KO percentage for any current champion when it was Wilder. And he didn't amend it, didn't correct it, just left it there. And, you know... Shameless. And you know something? Me trying to be fair and reasonable. No, no I've got to stop with that shit. Because every time Floyd says he can outpoint Triple G, I said, well, go and do it, Floyd. You know what I mean? You, I'm trying to be fair. But yo, didn't Abe Sanchez say that Triple G used to manhandle Kovalev in sparring? Go and do it again. Go and knock out the 168 guys. One of the idiots from that corner of YouTube who follows Shady Slim. I'm not dissing Shady Slim, you know. Golovkin's his man, no big deal. Golovkin's a good fighter, right? This guy who follows him has got this real tough name. <laughs> I'm never going to mention it. And, um, oh, yeah. Shady is the Floyd killer. They hate him because he's not a Panther channel. This is his serious analysis on boxing. And he goes around a lot of pages that I follow saying, oh, leave the real boxing talk to... His corner of YouTube. Really? I don't think so, Doogie. 
the Roman Gonzalez thing is fizzling out. And I'm not going to come up here and say it's all down to Roman being an incompetent fighter because it certainly isn't, yeah? For a start, they already started showing him on the network when he was in what? His third and fourth weight class, which is a little unfair. You don't get the whole picture. He's a great fighter. But the facts are, he didn't have a Rigondale Donaire type fight. The Rigondale Donaire fight was the biggest little guy fight in years. And basically, Gonzalez had the Estrada fight, but it wasn't a priority for HBO or anything like that. It wasn't a worldwide big fight, not super fight, big fight. It wasn't a big fight. It wasn't on HBO, it wasn't on Showtime, it wasn't on none of them networks, as far as I can remember. It became bigger and immortalised as years have gone past, and we all know Estrada is a quality operator and so is Roman, but at the time it wasn't a big fight. There's loads of people who follow boxing right now who don't know that fight. It wasn't a big fight. Rigondeaux performed. First big fight performed. Triple G? His first semi-big fight, I'll say semi-big fight, that's what I'll say. Jacobs has more of, of an extensive amateur career than David Lemieux. He has a better technique. It was a harder fight. It was a harder fight than the Lemieux fight, even going in. Fair enough. But he struggled. Even if you think Golovkin won, he struggled. And now, Abe Sanchez, when he was on Dante's Boxing Nation, he got so defensive anytime Dante even suggested that the public want to see a rematch got defensive. Not extremely defensive, but you know, you, you could feel, you could feel that he wasn't comfortable admitting that it was close enough that, yo. Play it again, Sam. That's the obvious move. I'm a Mayweather fan, but ask me if Floyd made deverish demands in his career. Yes, he did. Late in his career when he was already established a box office star pound for pound best one of the best exponents of the sport that anyone's ever seen he's 35 you can't even shift 300,000 pay-per-view units let's keep it real now there may be some kids who try and fight like triple g i'm talking about the aesthetics of his boxing now there may be a few but yo do you compare his influence stylistically on boxers to mayweather it's a no contest it's a shut it's shut down what a skeptic of the London MC say is shut down. Shut down, bro. Shut down. Where's Triple G's real popularity? I mean, so you can't convince anybody with any sense that his resume is better than Andre Ward to push him ahead of Ward in the pound for pound rankings. You can't. You just can't. Compare David Lemieux to Carl Froch. Compare Danny Jacobs to Kovalev. You lose. Now I got the ill street blues. Losing. You see, let's say you get your wish. Triple G is unfairly put into the pound for pound number one spot. Now, Ward can't sell nothing. I'll admit that. Ward can't sell shit. But he's there on the legitimacy of his skill and resume. Triple G will be put there similar to Roman Gonzalez only because it's, it's an engineered situation that they want to happen. And he can't franchise the sport. He can't sell 300,000 pay-per-views and he's 35 years of age. And this is his first weight class. So... When he gets that number one position, because obviously HBO, Ring Magazine, and whatever, blah, 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 they're going to eventually trump it up so he's there, ahead of Terrence Crawford, who you could argue should be there before him, and a few other guys, right? Who are you going to blame when he's put into this lofty position? Because look what happened to Roman Gonzalez, man. He was pound for pound number one guy. He couldn't even head his own card on HBO. He was relying on Triple G, on training on Triple G's weak numbers. Right, So who are you going to blame when he's in such a lofty position? Oh, number one guy. Ah, this is the franchise dude for the sport. And he can't shift anything. Oh, Mayweather killed pay-per-view with Pacquiao and Conor McGregor. That's what you're going to do. Weak shit. Oh, Al Heyman and the welfare recipients have killed the public lust to purchase boxing. So we can't sell no pay-per-view. All this bullshit is going to come up. That's what you're going to start with. Yeah? When he moves up to 168, let's say if Andre Ward does move back down because he really wants to fight Triple G. I bet you any money. I'm going to hear the biggest load of mumble mouth spin from Abe and Tom Loeffler to get out of the fight. I bet you any money. I bet you it won't be on Ward's behalf that the fight doesn't happen. I bet you. I bet you. How are you going to A-side Andre Ward? Even the magazine that's trying to prop up Triple G over the guy is saying that Andre Ward is number one. Aesthetically, his style doesn't stand out where 
people are going to try and fight him like you can see Mayweather has a style where people try to emulate. He doesn't have that. The truth is, you see in the last two performances, he is now suffering for the low level of opposition they've been giving him. Just like my sports teacher said, if you play with crap footballers, you will become crap yourself. I'm not saying he's crap, but he hasn't set a threshold. Yeah? He was trying to fight Jacobs the same way he's been fighting the other guys like Prosker and them guys. No, it's not, not going to work no more. Not going to work. And how much of a learning curve is there left at 35? The networks, the websites raved over how he performed against David Lemieux. Oh, what brilliant display of boxing. Well, hold on. Didn't Rubio and Alcine already do that? Now, don't get me wrong. I never downplayed the win because it was a unification belt and the belt was there to be taken so I never downgraded it but they went way over the top way over the top when we see current boxers doing similar displays and better all the time no disrespect I guess better opposition apparently when he arrived in London there wasn't no big turnout to see the new sensation that HBO and the ring and the writers and the fan base has been over hyping where were they and before you start saying, well, he doesn't act like Floyd jumping around. Well, Rocky Marciano didn't, but he had charisma. Triple G has no charisma, no off-mic charisma. Apart from being a heavy-handed guy, not really much razzle-dazzling in the ring, to be honest with you. It's not artistic, not that it has to be. But like I say, what kids are going to be fighting like Triple G? There'll be some, there'll be some trying to copy what he's doing, but... Copying Triple G would just mean developing a hard punch for the most part. That's all what separates him from any other fighter out there. He hasn't got no particular skill set that separates him from other fighters. If Triple G gets that number one pound for pound spot, all you extreme fans, all you're going to be doing is looking at external circumstances why it's not happening. Like I said, oh, Al Heyman has killed boxing with the free boxing for the welfare recipients. Mayweather killed pay-per-view. It will be it will be some black guy who's stopping him from getting there. Or us hating him because he's white. That's what it will be. And isn't he Asian, actually? <laughs> but the truth is, the numbers are showing out. Like, you know, the white demographic who like him in America, you know, there's more of you than African Americans. How come the pay-per-view figures are not reflecting it? Why aren't you buying it? Because you know the fights are gar not no no, not garbage. You know the fights are okay. But they're not worth you spending out a 60 pound or 80 or 100, whatever you, you have to pay out there. Or dollars, I should say. You know it. I know it, you know it. Like I said, you can't bullshit greatness. You can't bullshit greatness. We know what greatness is. If you have any common sense, it shouldn't even get into this black and white and back and forth debate. If you don't know what a great opponent is or a great fight or a big fight or a super fight is, then you should really sit down and stop complaining. Making up things. Ah, oh, Hagler was a flat-footed brawler. Well, that either tells me you didn't watch him or maybe you watched the last three fights of his career. That's what that tells me. Triple G would have knocked him out in a couple of rounds. Really? Cyclone Hart? Ever heard of Cyclone Hart? Ever heard of Tommy Hearns? Ever heard of John Beast Mugabe? Benny Briscoe? You ever heard of these guys? Oh, they're bums. I mean, nothing beats. The Mayweather killed pay-per-view theory. Well, it looks like he's going to do record-breaking numbers against Conor McGregor, or close to. So how comes he can come back and do these numbers? How come? And it would be the same if he was fighting a conventional boxer too. Right? So how comes he can do it, but this this guy, I'm being told, is so great, can't do 500,000 pay-per-view buys. Can't do 200,000 pay-per-view buys. What do they say? Is it a good craftsman never blames his tools? Well, the machine seems to work when Mayweather goes on it but when your guy goes on it all of a sudden it was working fine when our guy was on it I'll close by saying this Triple G Roman Gonzalez flagship in boxing boxing takes a hit and it suffers it doesn't die but it takes a hit and it suffers you put Mayweather in with his skill his resume what he brought to the table the flashing money about the girls, the bling, the this, the that, the money Mayweather as opposed to the the pretty boy. You hate it, you love it. Either way, boxing's in better shape. Boxing needs guys to flagship the sport. 
Jack Dempsey was flagship in the sport. He had a hard punch. He knocked people out. He really was vicious in that ring. Really vicious. He married Estelle Taylor. He acted himself. Joe Lewis flagship the sport. 12 years he held the belt for. Muhammad Ali. There'd be no global icon, sporting icons in sport. Forget boxing, in sport. If it wasn't for Muhammad Ali for the most part. Sugar Ray Leonard. Oscar De La Hoya. Mike Tyson. Now, you could keep talking about, well, he doesn't jump around all the place like you black guys. Well, it doesn't matter how you do it. Because all the guys I mentioned weren't black. Oscar's not black. Rocky Marciano weren't black. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just get it done. If you can't get it done, stop blaming the demographic and the welfare recipients and Al Heyman, PBC, racist, pamphlet, YouTube channels. Your guy just not cutting it. For whatever reason, he's not a crap fighter. I don't think he's bad. I think he's good, but he's just not cutting it. And it's too late for him to make any changes at 35. Like I said, I think he's now a little too comfortable in his own mediocrity with the opponents he's faced. Moving up to 168, it's not going to get any better. I don't think we'll ever see him fight at 175. He may be able to keep the ship steady at this level for a couple more years, but trust me, Anytime he takes that fight where the pay-per-view numbers will exponentially be considerably higher than what he's done. Because even the casuals know that this guy is formidable opposition that he's facing. What's going to happen? It's going to be another Jacobs or maybe worse. I don't know. Maybe he might prove us wrong and, you know, really dazzle. But I, 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 I'm thinking no. I'm thinking no. Kovalev, Ward, DeGale, Badu Jack, even a Gilbert Ramirez. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Eris Landy Lara. I'm not saying Lara will beat him, but yo, there's a reason why they don't want to go near it. Even though he doesn't show it outwardly because, you know, he seems like he's got a very modest type of temperament. He's bought into all this, I'm great, which you guys have been guessing him. Don't call a fighter great before he's had a great fight. Don't do it. Just because you hate black boxing fans. Stop that it's childish. Whether you're in the mainstream media or you're just trolling around on the internet. It's childish and it's boorish. It's not true. It's empty. It's empty. Triple G is not great because you won't allow him to be great. You won't allow him. You'll say any mediocrity that the guy does is great. So you're stunting his growth. There's nothing wrong with failing. And if you'd pushed him, he would have did it. Because you can see he has that temperament. Right? He would do it, but he's not being pushed. One thing they need to stop is some of the stupid gimmicks, you know, like the Mexican star thing. What's happened to all that? See, the Mexicans have their own fighters. So while some of them do appreciate Triple G for what he does, they have their own fighters. It's the displaced American dudes, non-black American dudes who are trying to ride off his coattails. Even the Eastern European dudes, I don't hear them going over the top about Triple G. And they're not stupid because what it is, these displaced non-black Triple G fans, we don't like black American fighters, they ain't done this, they ain't did this. When the Eastern Europeans, they love Ray Jones out there in Russia. They love Floyd Mayweather in Russia. They love Muhammad Ali. So what is it you're talking about? Eastern Europeans love Cuban boxing, right? Their programs were actually linked together. Russian coaches used to go out to Cuba. Teofilio Stevenson was partly trained by a Russian guy. And vice versa. You don't know none of this shit though. I'm talking about amateur level here. You know? And the ignorance that the Ring Magazine writers and you guys think that it's good if a fighter isn't co-signed by the African American crowd or by black boxing fans is totally stupid after the history and contribution of black people in the sport, coaching and fighting. I'm not saying he doesn't have no black supporters. He has quite a few. I like Triple G. In fact, he's too good for the false accolades. doesn't need it. It just makes him come off worse. Surely you can see that. 